Hello, everyone. It's Realtor Mike Thomas again coming to you about mortgage rates. Um, what's the difference? How does it affect you? What are my opinions on mortgages? And where do I think the rates are going and why? So up on the screen here, we have some uh, information from Value Penguin. I guess it's a my lending tree. Um, so it seems to be a reputable source. And what I want to take a look at, and I can go through the history of it from 1971 to 2022, but I don't want to bore you with in interest rates and things like that. I just want to get to the meat and potatoes of things of what's happening. So right here, we have a historical chart on where interest rate is, was, where it is now. Okay. So looking at this chart by Lending Tree, of course, uh, giving some credit and love to Lending Tree. Um, where are we? We're right here. That's pretty low. <laughs> that is really low compared to the history. So when people come to me and said, oh, my God, Mike, the interest rate is up a quarter percent, a half a percent, even one percent. My reaction is, is. So what? Big deal. You're going to lose a house over 1% one in, 1 interest rate. Could you imagine being back here in 1981 when the interest rates were at 16.6%? Oh, my God. So the average interest rate for me is about 8%. 6% is low, 10% is high. For me, that's my opinion. Because uh, if you look at the chart between 6% and 8%, it didn't really fall until the market crash of 2008. And it is still low and very low. And the reason interest rates are going up is because uh, I believe the federal government, um, the feds are trying to keep housing prices affordable for everyone. If they gave away the interest rate at 3% forever, what that would mean is that real estate prices could go up and up and up and up and up, and pretty soon every house out there would be more than a million dollars. And not a lot of people can afford that. So to keep the housing prices from jumping so high so quickly, uh, I believe the federal government is trying to raise the interest rate to um, keep the housing prices from escalating too high and to plateau them, not to bring them down or to crash it, but to actually plateau the housing prices uh, as we speak. So who is affected by housing prices and the interest rate? Well, people who don't have a lot of money. Rich people pay cash for their houses. So do they really care what the interest rate is? No. Why would they? They're paying cash. They don't care what the interest rate is. So people that come to me and they want to buy a house for more than a million dollars, most likely they're paying cash for it. And the interest rate does not affect them at all. Uh, so the working class people that are actually working hard for their money uh, every single day, um, you know, providing a service to everyone here is who's paying the price. So we have different type of mortgages. So you have my favorite conventional uh, because there's a lot less fees with conventional when you put down 20%. I think everybody should shoot for a conventional mortgage with 20% down if you're buying a house. Uh, but Everybody's needs are different, so I can't really say that's the best price for you or the best thing for you. Uh, some people don't have a lot of money, so they go conventional. They can put down less money, uh, only 3.5% on a primary residence or a FHA mortgage. But there's also caps and limitations, and that changes per county. So each county is different. Um, a county in a different state may have a different uh, FHA limitation as we have here in Palm Beach County. Um, I think our limitation right now is somewhere around 438, 450, somewhere around there for FHA limitations. 
But normally what I do is I send them, send a buyer to a mortgage broker, they'll get pre-qualified. Um, the debt to equity ratio can be higher. So if you're carrying a lot of debt or your credit score is not, um, not fantastic, an FHA product may be better for you. You will be paying mortgage insurance premium on that uh, because you don't have a lot of equity in your home and it's a high risk loan for the bank. Uh, because you're only own, owning three and a half percent and the bank is owning the other, what is it, 96 and a half percent of this loan. Um, it's a high risk to the bank. So they require what they call mortgage insurance premium. And so if you were to default on your, your mortgage, um, the bank will actually kick in and file a claim with the insurance company to get the rest of their money if if it doesn't cover uh, the amount of loan that you signed for. So that's mortgages kind of in a nutshell. There's also v, VA mortgages for veterans. If you served in the military, you may qualify for a mortgage, which is 0% down. Uh, it does have some benefits because there's not a lot of additional fees that um, uh, military or ex-military personnel uh, pay for at closing. So there is some benefit to that. Um, the best mortgage, I think, for a regular person is conventional by putting down 20%. You know, you're not carrying any mortgage insurance premium. There are conventional mortgages at 5%, but there is mortgage premium, uh, which could be pretty high. Uh, if you put down 10%, the mortgage premium drops again, which isn't bad. But after 20%, you can actually request to remove that mortgage insurance premium that you're paying, which could save you, you know, uh, two, $300 per month. Uh, you can get rid of that uh, as far as your monthly payments concerned. FHA currently does not allow that. Hopefully there will be something uh, coming down where they may allow it in the future. There's been talk about it, but if you are an FHA uh, loan holder, if, you, if your mortgage is an FHA loan, then your only option is, is to refinance it once it hits 20% loan to value. So once you hit 20% equity in your home, you can refinance it into a conventional mortgage and get rid of the mortgage insurance premium. It does require you to refinance it, and there is some closing costs involved in refinancing your home. So that's mortgages in a nutshell for me. I think a great interest rate is still 8%. We are still way below that in the history of the history of the United States of America since George Washington crossed the Delaware. Uh, we have never had a rate as low as we've had them in the past couple of years. It is historically low interest rate and it could not stay down there for ever. Uh, people have gotten used to that interest rate and considered it the norm, but it's no, it's not really a norm. It was to jumpstart the real estate economy. I believe that the feds dropped the interest rate so low to jumpstart the economy after the 2008 crash. And that's why we're seeing this here on the screen. As of 2008, they started dropping the interest rate and again, uh, to start it. When they wanna slow down uh, the price of homes jumping, they normally raise the interest rates because that for the working class people, again, this doesn't um, apply to the people who pay cash for their home, uh, which, I don't necessarily agree with, but it is what it is. It's for people that are borrowing money to buy a home. Uh, this way, it's the buying power. If you were able to buy a $500,000 home at a 3% interest rate, at a 5 or 6% interest rate, your buying power may only be 400 or 450. So it does take away the buying power of the working class people. Uh, I don't know how to solve that. I'm not an economist. All I'm telling you is I'm reporting you my opinion, 
what I think about the interest rate and where it should be going. It shouldn't shy you away from buying a home because if you rent it, a home for um, $2,000 per month, uh, that would be $24,000 per year. And if you rent it for a 10 year period, that would be $240,000 of rent that you would have been paying other than buying a home. But that doesn't stop there. Uh, there are other things that are involved as well. Mortgage interest is tax deductible. Um, and you may want to check with your accountant. I don't know if that is in all states and all places, but mortgage interest rate is tax deductible in my area uh, right now. And that means that whatever interest I pay, I actually get to deduct from my taxes, from the gross that I make. So that's a tax benefit for most people. And also, um, it is appreciation as well. Not only are you paying rent, you're not getting the appreciation and you're not getting the, the tax benefits as well. So I believe in buying homes um, and not renting, if you can, of course. Uh, we now have a program here at my office, the Thomas Team of Premier Brokers International Real Estate where we're able to do a rent to own uh, thing for you, where we now work with a company that will buy a home for you, rent it back to you, or rent it to you for up to three years until you're ready to buy it. Kind of a cool, neat little program. If you want to hear more about it, please stay tuned for more videos. Click the subscribe button, hit the notification bell, Give us uh, a like, show us your love, and leave a comment if you have any questions. This is Realtor Mike Thomas coming to you from Palm Beach County, Florida. Have a wonderful day and um, stay tuned for our next video.